Let's talk about completing collections in MLB The Show 22 and what you can do as a no money spin player to make sure you're getting the best squad possible with guys like that Randy Johnson, Frank Thomas, Roberto Clemente. You want those guys on your no money spin squad. They're going to be early game guys. We are seeing a ton and you want to be able to have those guys to compete with you. So in this video, I'm going to break down my process so far of attacking these collections, no money spin, how I plan on knocking these out in the next two weeks or so, maybe even a little bit less than that. If we can have our cards fall in the right way. First thing out the gate, I got to say it's a marathon, not a sprint. You don't have to get collections done day one you don't have to get in a week don't have to get in a month it's gonna take some time as a no money spin player and that's perfectly okay there's nothing wrong with that you don't have to be the first to complete them but do understand that is 100 feasible if you don't believe it in your brain as weird as it seems half of it's mental battle if you believe that you can knock out the collections and get them done and then move on to be able to get all the legend and flashbacks collection done joe mauer as well etc 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 you will definitely be able to knock it out but it starts with being in the right mindset and then we're gonna work on having our plan in place Place. so that plan in place what is that plan one well, we gotta start small we don't have to complete the entire collection at one time we gotta start small with it and take some smaller victories for example right here i'm gonna identify a division i think i can relatively complete early on and if i want to do in all our al i'm thinking i want that roberto clemente early on out the gate as quickly as possible so i'm gonna start with the nl and i'm gonna try to find somewhere where i can make some solid national league progress the nl central division it is relatively easy to complete and I collect this Prince Fielder in doing so. This Fielder, he's going to help out my squad early on. I don't really have a first baseman right now. Fielder can fill that role while giving me a better team. That's also going to allow me to get more subs through being able to be more successful in ranked seasons in the events, easier path through conquest, mini seasons, things of that nature. Prince Fielder is going to allow me to do that. And not only that, now all of a sudden I'm a sixth of the way division wise through completing the collections. Yeah, I'm still going to be missing a lot of the 90 plus guys, but being able to just have one division vision done and then from there we would move on to the west or the east because again we want to be able to make progress that's going to help out our team so no reason for me to do the nl central and then go back and do the al central or do two teams in the al and then come back and do three teams in nl pick one division knock that out and then within that division we'll advance to the league because then once again i'm getting that roberto clemente along with the chase at link kinley jansen those are four cards immediately early on in this game as an only spent player that are going to be in my lineup for quite some time because of how much better they are than their counterpart options so that is the biggest step is find your starting location for me i think i'm gonna start with the nl central but i may end up starting with the nl east as well that chase Utley looks really nice in addition to that we got the gary carter the hank aaron the schmidt strasburg gary sheffield probably won't use a couple of those but maybe a guy like hank aaron or gary carter i use not to mention i also knock out a good chunk of 90 plus live series diamonds as well of course we come down here into the nl east there's a lot of 90 plus live series diamonds of course on the Braves we have Acuna we can see his marketplace trend is trending up uh he's up to 211,000 on the buy now right now I expect these 90 plus live series to continue trending up as well that's generally the path that these take especially the more desirable ones a guy like Acuna who is usable in his own right you don't have to be completing collections to get Acuna he's just usable in his own right expect those to continue to trend up same can be said for you know here on the Mets a guy like DeGrom 135k right now he's been about flatline but I would expect him to trend up slowly as well. So getting a division where I can get 390 plus diamonds out of the way. A guy like Max Scherzer, only 59,000 stubs. I expect that to go up quite a bit. No reason for him to be so cheap as a 90 plus overall. In a division where we can knock out 390 plus diamonds and get a lot of beneficial cards to our squad. I'm going to use DeGrom. I'm going to use Acuna. I'll use Max Scherzer. Not to mention that Chase Utley fills a really, really big hole as well. Now all of a sudden, in at least maybe a really good starting place but that's what you have to decide at the end of the day is where is your starting place maybe it's LOS you get Mike Trout really early on in the game there's nothing wrong with that either but you have to pick a starting spot you have to pick one division and start knocking out those teams from that point and in addition to that all of a sudden okay I've decided in at least that's where I'm gonna start so we've decided to tackle the in at least here what we want to do then is to sell any card that is not in this division I mean any single card will come up to the Rangers here I got a guy like Corey Seager who right now is my second base but again, I'm about to be getting a other second base options through the NL East. Boom, that's 2,000 subs right here. We have Cole Calhoun. That's 113 subs. 
Nate Lowe, 155 stubs. It's not a lot of stubs at the end of the day, but all that adds up. If you have hundreds of cards that you're selling for 150 stubs a piece, you extrapolate that out. That's a decent chunk of change. That's about equaling what the value of a low tier diamond would be just by going through and selling all these other cards. And I know what you're probably going to say. You don't have to go back and buy those cards later. Yes, but over time, these live series cards are going to continue to drop in price as the prices of collections continues to decrease ever so slightly as more and more packs get influxed into the market. So because of that, when we do go back and buy these cards, we'll be able to go back and buy them for cheaper. We're not going to have to spend as many stubs to do so. Therefore, we're effectively saving quite a bit of stubs in doing so. Take a look at the Mariners here. I got Mitch Hanniger, 637 stubs. Again, it's not great, but that's like the value of just one really solid flip right there. Hey, Eugenio Suarez, another 260 subs. It's basically, again, the same as flipping, but we're just going through selling out our inventory, and then we can come back in and buy those later at a cheaper price whenever I'm ready to knock out the AL West division. But that bankroll early on is going to allow me to tackle these divisions while still having a lot of subs to flip with, which is another key as well. If you're doing flipping, stubs, investments, things of that nature, we do want to make sure we have stubs left over for that. If I come in, I complete the Mets collection and I have zero stubs left, then it's going to be tough for me to make back up more stubs on top of that because it does take stubs to make stubs. So we do want to make sure we have a little bit of a leeway oversell how many stubs you need for a division, then come in and start tackling it out. I'm about at 400k right now, 350. So I think once I get to 500k, hopefully getting there by the end of the day to day as you're watching this video, probably pretty close to 500k. You can check out with the progress on Twitch. That's a link to that down in the description below. Once I get to about 500k or so, gonna knock out the NL East and boom, that is a massive division done already. No money spent just after a couple days. And we've been able to attack that. I haven't done a ton of flipping. It's just been playing the game and taking what the game gives me on to the point of liquidating everything as well this is a massive way to make stubs that you probably don't even realize i guarantee you have a lot of subs in your inventory you don't even know about of course if you have a diamond piece of equipment you probably have gone through and sold that but even if we scroll through here uh and we get into some gold equipment we're gonna see value i mean 1300 subs here 3000 subs there 1200 there 2200 2800 if you just have any of these sitting around in your inventory that you've gotten from a free pack there's a lot of value in there look at these sponsorships we have sponsorships that are selling for three four five thousand stubs a piece even in our goals a couple hundred stubs here and there that's going to add up over time our stadiums are going to have value to several hundred stubs here for these silver stadiums a little bit higher or lower depending on what the stadium is as well and we have our unlockables too again go through and make sure you're clearing out your entire inventory don't just clear out your players come through clear out your old jerseys that you're not using again something we can always come back and buy back but at that 1,500, 2,000 stubs now. That is going to add up really quickly and help us build up that bankroll to more quickly attack these collections and knock them out of the park. Of course, flipping right now, not in the best state. So we do need some other ways to make stubs. One thing real quick, don't ignore some of these collections. We come in here to our stadium collections. If you have some non-sellable ones, you collect them all, you get a show pack there. We get five show packs for collecting all the MLB stadiums. Not to mention, we come in here to our legends and flashbacks. We got postseason cards cards you collect three of those you're gonna get five show packs these are a lot of cards you're gonna get while going through and completing these collections you're gonna have them locked in non-sellable cards and we're gonna turn some of these non-sellable cards into some free packs as well we can see some players there that we can get more players there 15 prospects for example we get five show packs that's nothing to scoff at we take those free stubs same if we come in here to our live series we go to the free agents tab we can see collect 80 free agents for five show packs the majority of these don't have much value 280 subs for a guy like mike soroka not too bad but you can lock those in or if you already have them locked in you can get that thousand subs plus five show packs 10 stubs 1500 subs for 140 free agents plus 10 show packs the ball in is a habit pack all things of that nature not to mention we come down here into the equipment and we can do a lot of the same things as well we come into the uniforms we got show packs for collecting 30 i only have 11 right now but i'll get some more over time some more show packs here more packs through all these if you have them non-sellable definitely do lock them in i have 14 diamond ones here for five show packs a lot of these are sellable though i'll probably go through and take that thousand 
stubs on these, at least for a couple of these. But hey, if I have 10 non sellable ones, might as well lock those in. Same with our throwback cars. We're getting a lot of these through the program. A decent chunk of these are non sellable. I know for a fact that these are non sellable. So boom, there's a free shell pack for you right there. That's going to add up to our stub count and allow us to do more. Same if we've gone through a uh, ball player. If you've been doing your road to the show program, we can see five perks here is going to get you a show pack. Same with our batting perks as well. Five is going to get you a show pack. These bronze ones and silver ones, not worth a whole lot of stubs. I'll lock those in, boom, and get another free pack right there. We can extrapolate that out. We get as many free packs as possible. You never know when a trout is going to be hiding through those. So don't ignore some of these smaller things with these collections and things of that nature. In addition to all that, don't be afraid to sell rewards that you get as well. We come in to the event here and we grind it out and we get Soriano, 13,000 stubs. We get Nolan Ryan, 21,000 stubs. We combine those together, like 35,000 subs or so. That is the value of a nice mid-tier diamond. And boom, that's a big collection piece cut out. Or that's halfway to Max Scherzer as well. Boom. You almost have a 90 plus diamond from that. Don't be afraid to come in and sell those. Same with BR as well. We come into the BR program. We're getting all the bronzes, the silvers, the golds, not to mention the 90 overall at 90 points, plus the flawless player. These flawless players right now selling for around 55,000 subs. Again, that's about the value of a Max Scherzer card. Halfway to some of these other 90 plus diamonds as well. A fourth of the way to a guy like Acuna. That's giving us a lot of progress and we can always come back and buy these cards later. Once you have the live series collection done, your stubs will start to flow quite a bit. And we're not even going to limit it to those as well. I don't blame you if you don't sell these at all, but coming in and selling these face of the franchise cards, not necessarily the worst idea. 30,000 stubs a piece here. I 31,000 for a guy like Buxton. We get a little bit deeper in here and at least we got a guy like Acuna selling for 46,000. Take a look at the AOS here. This Mike Trout for 67,000. Seeger's at that 68,000. We're able to get 60,000 here, 50 here, 40,000, 30,000. All of a sudden, that is almost getting us the value of the live series Mike Trout alone. Now, of course, we didn't lose those six cards. There's definitely value in keeping those on your team, but I also expect the prices on these to drop relatively quickly as well. Probably settle around that 15 to 20K range as more people get through the program. Still 24 days left. So there's definitely some value in going through and selling all those. All of a sudden, now you've worked up your bankroll to about a million subs. You knock out two divisions in the NL. You got about 200K left. You flip with that a little bit. All of a sudden, now we have the National League locked out. Yeah, we've lost some of these phases of the franchise cards, but again, we can go back and buy those. And we have guys like Chase Utley, Prince Fielder, and Roberto Clemente on our team. That's going to make us a much better team long term. So that is my approach to collections so far this year. I'm going to start with the NL East. I think I kind of just decided that while doing this video. We're going to start with the NL least. I think that's going to give me a lot of value in getting those 90 plus overall diamonds out of the way and on my team that I can use. And I'm going to get a big chunk of the collections done as well. I'm not going to be afraid to go through and sell cards that maybe I would want to hold on to otherwise, especially those face of the franchise cards, the BR12 and O guys. I'm not going to be afraid to sell those to add to my stub bankroll to help me more quickly knock out collections. Because again, once I get collections done, the stubs really just flow from that point onwards. So don't be afraid to do that sell everything be really focused on one division at a time and you'll definitely make much more progress in knocking out these live series collections than you think and you'll be done with these in no time i think a good rule of thumb you're wondering how long it should take i think if you're an average player just playing it organically here and there i think if you're done with the live series collection by middle of may early june i think that's a really good pace to be and a guy like randy johnson is still going to be very very usable come may and june this year going to be a staple in your squad for some time as always you have any questions hit me up down in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe as we begin our push to 25,000 subs gaining much much closer day in and day out i appreciate all the support so far on the videos here in the launch of mlb 22 to this point it's officially fully launched season now as well with the standard edition and game pass in the game. Super excited for this year ahead. Until next time, I'll catch y'all around.